Howdy y'all, this is Laird, and I'm going to talk to y'all about Eidolon hunting today. Operator, you have so, well. this is your heads up, this video is going to contain spoilers for the Second Dream and the War Within. So, the first thing is, what is the Eidolon? The Eidolon is a large boss that spawns on the plains of Eidolon on Earth, connected to the hub node of Cetus. It spawns every 150 minutes, and it is active for 50 minutes. Uh, the world state clock at the front of your ship by navigation will tell you how long till night falls, which is how long till it spawns. So why would you want to kill it? It drops arcanes, which are incredibly powerful buffs for your gear. Uh, to name one of the stronger ones, Arcane Grace is a percentage health heal on damage. That is incredibly good. Um, it also gives Brilliant Eidolon Charge, which are there to buff your uh, operator, which you used to unlock operator way no waybound nodes which are a form of buff. They give bonus max health, they give bonus health regen, max energy, energy regen, dash speed, so on and so forth. So what do you need to hunt? Your first step is you need an operator. Good news. If you've done the war within, you have an operator. You need to do Saya's Vigil to unlock the Anko Syndicate faction in, in uh, Cetus. That's a real easy quest on Earth. If you're a newer player, you've probably already done it just going through the star chart. So you need to go to a room on Earth. I will show y'all real quick as I talk. You need to go to this room on... Sorry, off planes. Sorry. So you need to go to this room. And you need to talk to Anko, and he will, at the first time you go in, he will give you a moat amp. That moat amp is going to be your lifeline. Isn't, uh, moat amp is not, the amp system is. The moat amp is absolutely terrible, and we are going to be replacing it before we start really hunting. Don't worry, though, you do not need the meta amp for your first hunt. You just need to get rid of the moat amp, because the damage output is abysmal. So you're going to come up through Cetus, um, through the marketplace, and you're going to come all the way up here to where Kanzu is. And we're going to go past him, and around the back there's this area. And there's these symbols, and then there's this door that you've probably walked up to and noticed it doesn't open. Your operator opens the door. And then you're going to talk to him. And you're going to go to the browse wares. This is the amp you start with. Note the damage output. 200 damage. In time. So we go to amp assembly. The amp you're going to be building is the Replac. Which is, um, to use a gun, it's about like a Latron. And then you're going to use the Pincha, which is kind of like a mini Opticore. And then you're going to use the... Yes, the Clapper. Uh, These are the Tier 1s. I will double check this one just a second to make sure I get it correct. So if you notice, with this Tier 1 setup, you are doing 3,000 damage a shot on your primary. And your secondary is doing 9,000. You are already way past the damage point of that initial amp. So to craft it, you're going to need... To improve your efficiency. You're going to need 2,000, so that's 20 of the basics of intact sentient cores. You need 20. You're going to need 20. So you're going to need 60 intact sentient cores to farm this. That's a lot. Was it ever thus? Ah. So... You can get those by killing the uh, sentience on Lua, or by farming Vomvalist. And I'm going to show you how to do that as soon as the sun goes down. But while we wait for the sun to go down, I will continue the conversation and talk about the rest of this. So, also, to get your amp, you are going to need fishing and mining resources. Those are easy enough. Get the mining drill from Fortuna, because it's better than the mining drill on Cetus. And then get the fishing tools for Cetus fish. If you do not have access to the top tier fishing equipment, an easy workaround is to use the Warframe Volt that I'm using right now. Volt's passive, as you walk, builds a static charge. This static charge will do enough damage to one-shot the fish even if your spear is not the right tier. 
Uh, you also need Cetus Wisp, which are a mess to farm, and I'm going to show you all how one of the ways I do it. I will also, in chat, link a video by, or uh, not in chat, sorry, in the description, link a video by Brozine that will show you his map he uses, because this is based off of his route, kind of off the top of my head, so it's not perfect. Switch to the Nerd, just for the energy region. And here's how you farm Cetus Wisp. Another common build is to use Nova with max range portals. I'm partially doing this because I need the map to show you. So you go to the plains, and we still have 20 minutes. Your first stop is you're going to go here to Garethot Lake, and you're going to run the perimeter. Then you're going to run across the perimeter of this lake, this lake, and this lake, and come back, because they spawn next to bodies of water. So. You can also use your, uh, the word escapes me, your arc wing. But why do that when you can just take a lovely stroll as Vault? And as I run this coast, I'm going to try to watch the opposing coast, even if I get a little off course. And you can, a sniper's actually kind of handy because you can use it to zoom in and check if you end up on this island. And then go across. Eyes open. You saw nothing. In your neighborhood. So, because there weren't any here, we're going to head to the next lake, which is roughly this way. And we're literally just speeding along, letting our uh, vacuum try to help us and loot radar try to help us. And then stopping checking. We don't find it. We move on. Whatever these cephalites have become, there's no going back. We check this lake. Just make sure I didn't miss it. They're hard to farm. Uh, they are not the most consistent at spawning. And they can be rather difficult to find. Uh, this part, find a podcast you like. And just, just relax. You're going to be here a while. Because I believe you need 20 to finish your starter... Amp. Sorry, I passed the door, didn't I? No, right here. So that's like a very rough version of the circuit you're going to take. And why I didn't find one, I did the whole circuit in under three minutes. And if they're not out there, come back in, wait about two seconds, go right back out, repeat the loop. Keep doing it till you get enough uh, wisps. To that end, farming Cetus Wisp, I, I highly, highly advise you take the time and invest in a resource booster. For every one you'll get, you'll get an extra one, and that cuts your farming quite literally in half. Which, needless to say, that is very handy. So, after you have your amp assembled, and you have your... You have your amp assembled and ready to go. The next thing you need is a weapon. So the meta weapons for Eidolon hunting are snipers. Particularly the Rubico and Rubico Prime, the Ulanka, and that make in the Vectus and Vectus Prime. Those weapons make up ninety to ninety five percent of what you'll see. And they're all built about the same. Uh, I will use my Rubico build, because it's not 100% yet, which shows that you don't need perfect builds. Uh, I get, I'll probably put one more form on this and throw something in the slide, I just haven't decided what yet. So I'm running Serration, or in this case Amalgam Serration, Point Strike, Vital Sense, Vigilante Armaments, Stormbringer, Hellfire, Split Chamber. And I'll explain why. Point Strike, Split Chamber. Or 
I'm sorry, points rate, vital sense. Crit chance, crit damage. Crit chance, crit damage. You need to do big bursts of damage to a single spot. You are not mowing down mobs of enemies when fighting the Eidolon. You are fighting one big boss. The more damage you can put out per shot, the better. To that end, I'm using the flat 90% elementals to make radiation because that is what the Eidolon is weakest to. Split chamber, vigilante armaments provide extra shots per trigger pull, which in essence act as additional DPS. Uh, the last slot can be whatever mod you want, um, depending on your build, like for my Lanka, I have a Riven, it is far from meta, but I like it. And this is my main hunting weapon. Uh, these mods are lower just because I would need to put in two more Forma to fit into 90% elementals, and this weapon does just fine as is. To that end, um, if you don't have a sniper that you like, the Opticor, while not perfect, is a suitable substitution, particularly the Opticor Vandal, which you get from the Thermia Fractures event that comes around every couple of weeks. But for the hunt I'm going to do in a little bit, I'm going to stick with my Rubico Prime. Your secondary doesn't really matter, you're not going to be using it, ditto for your melee. Your focus schools make a big difference at higher tier hunting, but just getting started... Uh, if you don't have access to any other nodes, like you just have one focus school, use it. If you've unlocked a second focus school that wasn't Matterai, and it was, if you've unlocked Vazarin, use Vazarin. If you have Matterai, Matterai is the meta school for the most part. You'll have one person using a Nairu, and I'll come back to that. And in particular, I know I have everything unlocked. All you need to deal with an Eidolon. is Void Strike. You can literally put everything else away and just use Void Strike and be fine. I'm just going to use my Waybounds and Void Strike to prove my point. So what Void Strike does is for every second you cloak, you increase the damage of your next attack, both in Operator Mode and Warframe Mode. That makes the beginning of the fight so much easier. When you're solo hunting, you get in my case, I have six shots. That is down the shields, down a limb, hopefully down the shields and limbs a second time. If I don't miss any shots. They probably won't be that many because I have to waste one shot to capture an amp. In a coordinated squad, Void Strike is the reason you can get maybe 15 Eidolons a night with a good group. So if you have Matterai, run Matterai. If you don't have Matterai, run what you have. But start saving your lenses, like start farming lenses to get Matterai. Your Parazon doesn't really matter. Um, I will say one thing, if you have it, um, oh, sorry, wrong tab. If you do have some mods, Auto Breach is nice because it makes it a little faster sometimes to get your lure <coughs> oh, so for your gear wheel you must have your arc wing arc wings are just about non-negotiable k drive is a, is a good substitution oh, and saying an arc wing is mandatory is a little harsh arc wings are highly advised because they give unprecedented levels of mobility they are also the easiest part of this whole kit to get, more than likely. They are in the Tenno Lab of your clan dojo for a reasonable cost of primarily fishing resources. A K-Drive is a good alternative. You get one for free for finishing the quest on Fortuna. So now on to Warframes, and this part seems pretty obvious. Oh yeah, the game's Warframe. You're going to be using a Warframe. There's a little bit more to it than that. Not every Warframe is suitable for hunting, so put down your Novas and Nixes and try some of these. Volt, a starting Warframe that is hunting viable, primarily because of his shield. The shield is one of the few abilities in game, the only other one I believe was recently patched being a augment for an Arcwing ability. This boosts the crit damage and electric damage. No, the crit damage of your amp. 
this makes you kill shields faster. So just having a vault in your squad that can drop shields, that's excellent. That boosts everyone's DPS for both phases, operator and limb. Because the shields also boost your crit damage. So vault drop shields, everyone shoots. They switch back into their warframes, they keep shooting through a shield. The build is also one of the easier ones to put together. Uh, you need some health. Uh, I'm running the Vigilante armor, uh, Vigilante set mods, and Hunter's Adrenaline. Uh, Vigilante set mods are to increase the damage output on my Warframe uh, for my weapons, and Hunter's Adrenaline is just a better version of Rage. If you have Rage, Rage is a perfectly acceptable alternative. If you don't have Prime Continuity and Prime Flow, run regular Continuity and regular Flow. The numbers will just be a little lower. Currently, my shield is active for 56 seconds. If I put in a regular continuity, my shield duration is 52 seconds. That is not that big of a deal. You're losing 4 seconds. Uh, if you have the um, arcane or aura deadeye, it's highly recommended because it increases your whole team's damage because everyone will be using snipers. Uh, my build has some efficiency in it because I'm not running uh, any sort of energy gen from Xeneric. Any energy I get will be from energy pads I drop myself or teammate drops. Uh, other Warframes that you can use are Harrow. Uh, Covenant will block the damage from a burst that the Eidolon does after destroying a limb. Uh, the portion of the limb that damage is called Synovia, so when I say that term later on, that's what I'm referring to. Uh, you can use Oberon. Oberon's Hallowed Ground will prevent the status procs from the Synovia Burst. It deals a large amount of magnetic damage. Uh, Renewal will help keep your team alive with a heal over time, and if they're standing on your Hallowed Grounds when you do it, they gain bonus armor. Uh, if you're using his Augment Smite Infusion, it also increases your team's DPS output significantly. Another Warframe you can use is Trinity. Blessing will heal any Eidolon lures you're using and your teammates. You know, Blessing is just a solid ability. Nothing to complain about there. Uh, Rhino's Roar can boost the Warframe's DPS output significantly. And because you're not worried about crowd control, you don't have to focus on range as much for a stomp build. And you can get up to a pretty significant number for your uh, power strength output. And then Chroma is one of those old workhorse meta frames for this. He can one-shot limbs like it's no one's business. Vex armor, when fully maxed out, is one of the best DPS generators in game. But if it's your first hunt, and your Chroma isn't already set up for it, don't bother. My recommendation for new players is to use Volt, because Volt's build is really straightforward. You probably have the mods, you probably have the setup already. So just run with Volt. Now, any other frame can technically work, or a lot of other frames. Uh... One of my personal favorites for when I'm not trying to follow the meta is I'm a big fan of Wisp. Uh, use Wisp and with her, uh, the moat she drops, those give a ton of health and fire rate. With the Rubico, you blast through your shots and you can put out some amazing DPS matching some single shot versions like the Lanka. Where they have a bigger charge time but a sink bigger damage per hit. Because you're just going to have a ridiculous fire rate. And then you can use with second ability to dodge the magnetic burst from Synovia procs. And your companion does make a difference when you go hunting to move on to the next tab. Uh, whatever. I learned this from the Warframe Discord today. You do not want to be running Vacuum. Because it will steal the Unairu Wisp, which is a damage buff another player can bring. Personally, for this hunt, I'm going to bring my Sly Volfaya, because when it dies, no one has to pick it up. It picks itself up after 30 seconds. So that way, it's one less thing I have to make my team worry about during a hunt. If you bring a Sentinel, like my Dirge that I just showed, you can use it as what's called a Sentinel stack, stat stick, where you put the Vigilante set mods on it, to increase the stats of your weapon without sacrificing your own mod slots. 
because some of the Vigilante mods aren't the best DPS increasers. The Vigilante mods are acquired from Cetus Bounties. And if you want to start getting ready for the hunt, I highly recommend that. So now that we've covered your Warframe, your weapons, your Arcwing, your Companion, your Operator, and your Amp, you're ready to hunt. You need two things. You need people to hunt with and the Eidolon to be spawned. People to hunt with, uh, the Warframe Discord, which will be linked down below, has an excellent community and there will be bound to be bound to be people there that can help you, or you can brave recruiting chat. Or you can come over here to Kanzu, and when the sun goes down, he has a bounty for Eidolon hunting. And that will matchmake you with other people doing Eidolon hunts. So now that we've covered all the basics, uh, we are going to wait for the Eidolon to spawn, which will be in five minutes. And we will take take him on, and I will talk you all through the basics of the fight. And I'm going to stop recording for a moment. Okay, guys, so we're out on the plains, and the sun goes down in one minute. So I'm out here a little early, partially so I can charge my Void Strike, and partially so I can tell you all how this is going to go. Soon as the sun is fully down and night starts, I'm going to Twin Horns to pick up my first lure. Lures are optional unless you want to start learning how to capture. I'm doing it to keep it from running away because I am solo. What I'm doing now is charging my Void Strike. So, yeah, still in, less than, still in a minute or less than a minute now. So I'm going to get... I'm going to get the lure, I'm going to hack it, I'm going to bring it with me to the fight. Doing so, I will lose at least one charge. Um, I'm not going to fully charge it, because charging it would burn all my Void Strike charges, making that part rather useless. So I'm going to go have to hunt it down at least once. At the start of the fight, the Eidolon, for lack of a better word, is kind of oblivious to you. It's less he doesn't care, more like... He's a two-story tall monster, and you're an ant buzzing around his feet. Once you start shooting him, that quickly changes, though. Okay, we have 40 seconds left. I'm going to start moving in the right direction. So I'm going to do this solo with a rather basic setup. I'm not using a Rivened weapon. I'm not using a high damage boosting frame. I'm not going to play perfectly. This is to show y'all, idol on hunting can be done by anyone. And with that out of the way, I'm going to go back into my Warframe, because he'll take these hits a little bit better. Five seconds. Three, two... One, the lure should be spawning any second now. And of course, it hasn't spawned here yet, so I'm just going to move to the next spawn. So the lures spawn in all the Grenier camps. It's a balloon, like that. So you have to shoot it, which unfortunately burns a charge. Meleeing it would burn the charge as well. And then you hack that. And now we're going to run to where he spawns. He spawns somewhere near Garethot Lake. So I'm going to start heading a little north of it to try to cut him off. So I didn't fall in the water there. That would have been bad because I would have lost my charges. You know what? There's a second ant. I still need to hack that one. So now that I have two lures, which is good for a capture, I'm going to start heading this way. And now comes a bit of looking and a bit of listening. His footsteps are massive, and you can hear them from a decent distance away.
trying to figure out those are gunshots or steps. So like I said, this part is just finding him. Which can be one of the most frustrating parts of this whole system. Normally I wouldn't use my arc wing because it would cause me to lose a charge, but for the sake of finding him for this video... Okay, hear him. There he is. Oh yeah, that's the trick to get off without burning a charge. So now that I found him, I'm gonna drop my shield, gonna get into operator mode, and we're gonna just burn through those shields. I didn't charge a whole lot, and as you saw, I also whiffed a shot, so it's gonna take a second. It also helps that he's currently stuck on a piece of terrain, so he's not moving. Here comes his first attack, which we're just going to jump over. So, on to some general fight mechanics. Now that that's down, I'm going to start shooting a limb. And you're going to focus one limb at a time. So it breaks. I'm going to take my Warframe, and I'm going to dash away. To avoid that magnetic spike. If the lures were charged, I would have stayed closer, but they're not, so I'm not going to. The terrorist retreats, so he's now retreated so somewhere. Wary of you. So he's over there at that blue spike of light. If you ever lose your Eidolon, whether it's you don't have a lure or the lure dies, Send someone up in an arc wing, and that's how you can find them. So now, before I down the shields this time, I'm going to try to charge up the lures. Eyes open. There's glass resonance in your neighborhood. So he's going to start with another stomp, just jump over it. Uh, for general fight mechanics, it's bring down the shields, bring down the limbs. For some specifics, to dodge a lot of stuff, just use your operator and crouch. Uh, the crouch in operator mode makes you immune to almost all damage. It's also why it's great for reviving your teammates. So here's a Vom Blast. So I'm going to down him. Give me that old charge. I'm going to bring the charges over to my hand. Kill that thing so it doesn't bother my cat. Then I'm gonna kill. And so it goes. I'm sorry, little friend. See the problem when they're okay. It's one charge. No. So I need to get one of them fully charged where it's blue. That device is insufficient. So. It's now fully charged, so I'm going to drop a shield. And I'm going to burn his shields again. Going to crouch to dodge the hit. And then I'm gonna burn the top arm, Synovia. Energy spike. I advise falling back. Okay, now both my lures are charged, so I get to do a capture. And now it's just. Continue to burn and repeat. 
I'm trying to deal with these farm boys so they don't blow up the lure. use the primary shot. Uh, I'm using the Schwak Prism on my build, so I'm hitting multiple hitboxes. And now it's burned down a limb. That interrupted the attack. I'm going to back up. I'm gonna drop two energy pads to recharge. I got too far away, as you see, and now he's gone. The terrorist retreats, but remains close by. Let's see, Where he teleported. Oh, right there. Y'all didn't see anything. So now we're gonna set up right here. And we are going to rip through his shields for the last time. Because this is his last win. And now, kill all the Vomvoists that start coming towards him, because they're going to try to heal him, creating a shield phase. We are going to try to skip that last shield phase and just DPS him. That just involves killing as many of these little guys as you can. And I'm going to start crouching to charge up some damage for this last stage. When you do a capture, the loot is going to spawn on your lures. Like, watch, they're going to explode in just a second. And see, that's where all the loot comes from. So, a second, I'm going to get in the air and get out of the range of these guys. So, to cover the loot, we got a Brilliant Eidolon Shard. You use this to summon the Gauntalist, which is the next hardest uh, Terrorist, or Eidolon. Eidolon Shard, you use these for crafting and for rep. These are what you turn in to rank up. Intex, which you get from the Vomulist. Exceptionals from the Limbs. Flawless from Capturing. These are worth the most. The unidentified item is... Some kind of arcane. We'll find out what kind in a second. I just saw a Kuka cl uh, Spinal Claw there, which is a uh, Eidolon resource. So we're going to head back to Cetus to find out what we got. And I just recommend using your Arcwing and just speeding back. Unless you plan on doing more than one. If you plan on doing the uh, Gauntalist or Hydroist, uh, stay spawn those, otherwise just come home. And I got Arcane Healing, which is a chance to resist radiation status. Currently not the most useful, but if there's ever an event full of radiation hazards, like the Radiation Hazard Sortie, you can use those. Uh, a 5 stack is 104%, I believe. So that's how you, that's how you kill your first Eidolon. Now, 
I told you y'all could also go out there and farm just the intact cores with Ivara. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Here's my Ivara. My stealth conservation build. I replace navigation with infested mobility through the helmet system you get on Deimos. And I will quickly show y'all how to do that. Or how to do this farm. So you go out here, you get some energy. And now, a massive sentient energy spike in your area. I advise you to be careful. No nice energy. We literally just roam around the plains looking for the Vombalist. Because they've invested mobility, I'm just going to roll around. And here's how it goes. You get next to him. That one dropped a core. That one dropped a core. Now, I kill him. He drops another core. I kill him. He drops another core. So you just repeat this process going around the plains. I've been out here for less than a minute. I already have four. If this was all I'd ever done, I needed 41 more. You know, well, 56 more to finish the project. <coughs> so you'll see how this works. You just go around and you roll and you prowl next to them and you take their loot and then you kill them. Like that one out there. Or those two out there. Because of where they are. Gonna use rip line to get closer to them. Or zip line. And then... And now we have some more idle cores. So that is all the basics of Eidolon hunting and acquiring your first amp. Uh, this is my first attempt at recording content for YouTube. I really hope y'all liked it. I'm going to get this uploaded soon. And uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, tell me what I can do better. Tell me how I can improve. Um, I plan with next week to get some Dead by Daylight content up and talk about some DVD killing games. Uh, the hopeful primary focus is con this channel is going to be Warframe. If y'all don't like it, though, we can talk about figuring out what works. Y'all have a good one now, okay?